Thank you for joining with us this morning, those in the auditorium, those watching live stream. Those in the auditorium, if you would take your songbooks, turn to page 364, 364, standing on the promises. Let's stand together and sing this out as Brother Jared comes and leads us in singing, page 364. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Thank you all for joining us uh, this morning and those in the auditorium, those live streaming. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer, then we'll be seated, and then we'll have another song. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this wonderful opportunity you've given us once again to meet together. Let us uh, never take it for granted. We ask your blessings upon the service to the final amen, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Take your songbooks, turn to page 401, 401 in our songbooks, set my soul afire. Let's sing all these verses as Brother Jared comes and leads us in singing.
And we do want to mention uh, how uh, thankful we are for those uh, who uh, bring their tithe, give an offering, give the missions, and then those giving through the mail. Thank you so much. And uh, our address appears on the screen, First Baptist Church, 235 High Street, Perth Amboy, New Jersey, 08861, Attention Financial Secretary. Also, every Saturday morning at 1030, we have church-wide soul winning. We invite all to come and join in with us as we go and knock on doors, uh, seeking those who will listen to us as we share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with them. We're going to have another song and then remain standing for the scripture reading and prayer and then we'll be seated then we'll look into god's word this morning right now though take your songbooks turn to page 244 244 244 amazing grace and let's stand together as brother jared comes and leads us in singing page 244 Remain standing, and if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalm 19, Psalm 19, and I'm going to read verses 7 and 8, Psalm 19, 7 and 8. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the scriptures. Holy Spirit, please take the word and be our teacher and preacher. Fill me with thy spirit now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I want to say something from the book of Proverbs this morning. The book of Proverbs talks, talks about several things. It talks about wisdom. It talks about 
understanding. It talks about knowledge. And it also talks about one being simple, one being a fool, and one being wise. Now, God's people, those of us who know the Lord, those of us who are saved, uh, God's people need to be wise. We need not to be fools, and we need not to be simple. I read to you from Psalm 19, 7 and 8. I'm going to read it again, once again, to you. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Now in Psalm 119, verse 130, Psalm 119, verse 130, it says something very similar to Psalm 19, 7 and 8, which we just read. Psalm 119, 130 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. Now, the dictionary definition of the word simple is unlearned and ignorant. It even uh, uses the word in the definition gullible. So the simple one is unlearned, ignorant, gullible. Now, turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. The Bible says the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple. Now, if you look at that word that I just read, subtlety, uh, if you really try to pronounce it the way it's written in our King James Bible, um, you'd probably be saying a word that uh, you're not used to saying. But actually, uh, we pronounce it subtlety. And if you look it up as I did in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary that defines all the words uh, used in the King James Bible, it says this. It means refinement, extreme acuteness. So listen to that part of the uh, portion of Scripture again. To give subtlety, that is to give refinement, to give extreme acuteness to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So the simple man is different, though, when we read the book of Proverbs. He's different from the fool in that the fool has chosen the path of stupidity. He has had many chances. I'm talking about the fool now in the book of Proverbs. He had many chances to receive instruction. He had many chances to receive learning and correction, but he did not receive it. He turned away from it. But concerning the simple man, now not the fool, but the simple man, it's not too late for him. It's not too late for the fool either. But the simple man is usually someone who is young, someone who is inexperienced, someone who didn't have the opportunity to have learned much. In the book of Proverbs, the simple one is being reached out to and is encouraged to get knowledge. He's encouraged to be smarter, getting instruction, learning, and getting wisdom. So in God's word, being simple is not as negative as being a fool. If there's a choice between being simple or a fool, certainly we'd rather be simple than a fool. 
Uh, it's worse to be a fool, but too many of God's people tend to be simple when it comes to God's word, when it comes to doing God's will for their lives. All of God's people should want to increase in learning. All of God's people should want to increase in knowledge and in wisdom and get away from being simple in our minds and in our lives. And so, why should God's people, those of us who know the Lord as our personal Savior, why should God's people not want to be a simple one? We should not want to be a simple one. Certainly, we don't want to be a fool, but uh, we would certainly rather be wise. But why should God's people not want to be a simple one? Well, according to Proverbs chapter 1, beginning in verse number 1, God's word is designed to give subtlety to the simple and to give knowledge and discretion to the young man, that is, to help a young man not to grow up a fool and ruin his life. Acting foolishly or taking the part of a fool ruins people's lives. Now, uh, better than being a fool is being simple, but we don't want to be simple either. And so, God's words are the solution, though, for us not being simple as far as those of us who are saved. A saved person can be simple. We don't want to be simple. We want to be wise. And if you're a simple person, you're on your way to become a fool if we remain simple unless we're on our way to become wise. I want to be on my way to be wise, not on my way to be a fool. So the simple one needs to stop loving simplicity and to rather love knowledge. But the fool, the Bible tells us, hates knowledge. So it's God's will that one does not grow up a fool and ruin his life. God does not want even his children to remain simple. He wants us to be wise. So here another reason why we don't want to be a simple person, and that is to not be roped in by the strange woman, according to Proverbs. Here Proverbs chapter 7, beginning in verse number 6. Proverbs chapter 7, beginning in verse number 6. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement, watch these words, and beheld among the simple ones, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. What does it mean to be void of understanding? It means someone who is lacking understanding, someone who is uh, empty of, of that quality, that it isn't just there. So it says here, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Now I know, and you know, that not every person, young or older, or whoever, uh, however old they may be, uh, don't uh, go to, on the street and, and look for prostitutes. Most don't, some do, but most people don't. Uh, how do they end up getting involved with a so-called strange woman? It could be someone you know, someone may become a girlfriend or a boyfriend of yours, and then people get involved in things they shouldn't get involved in. We're talking about now fornication and uh, premarital sex. Uh, no, none of God's people should ever uh, commit fornication or have premarital sex. They should save each other if they respect each other, if they love God, they would keep themselves 
for the spouse that God has for them. But we're talking about the strange woman, so just don't think it's a prostitute. It could be anyone other than uh, your wife. And so one of the dangers of being naive, one of the dangers of being simple, one of the dangers of being gullible is that one will be roped in by the strange woman, the one who was enticed by the whorish woman was, the Bible says, a simple man, a simple man. Here, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs 8, verses 5 and 6. O ye simple, O ye simple, understand wisdom. Who's he talking to? He's talking to God's people. And that's why parents should teach their children to live godly and holy and save themselves for their future spouse. That's why there needs to be strictness in the house. And so Proverbs 8, 5 and 6 says, O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. He's talking about giving simple ones good advice and instruction, as parents should do to their children. So the Bible constantly tries to appeal to the simple one, trying to get his attention in order to help him or her, in order to keep them from ruining their lives or destroying a future that uh, God has for them that would be blessed. So we need to stop being simple and take the path of knowledge, take the path of wisdom, instead of thinking everything is, is a joke, that it's okay, uh, whatever anyone wants to do, it's fine. It's okay to sow uh, one's wild oats, it's okay. But God says that's not okay. That's a, a simple one, even a fool, but God doesn't want any, again, of his children to be simple. It's the wise man, though, who takes life seriously and listens to instruction and teaching from God's word. So simplicity destroys a person sooner or later. Again, God does not want us to remain simple. He wants us to be wise. And so simplicity will lead to the path here in what we're talking about now to the strange woman. Simplicity will lead to young people or even uh, older than young people to fornication and premarital sex. Uh, that's the simple one. But, but uh, uh, that, uh, according to Proverbs 9, beginning in verse 6, uh, is something that God warns us about. Uh, Proverbs 9, verse 4, it says, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. Listen to that again. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, come, eat of my bread. So understanding is inviting the simple one to come in and learn. It says, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. So we keep on reading about wisdom, understanding, knowledge, discretion, all of these things that God wants his people to exercise. And it's not only young men who are simple and gullible and naive, but it's also young women. She's also not to grow up to be simple, male or female. God's people are not to be simple, but to be wise. The definition of a, a simple woman in Proverbs chapter 9 is that she doesn't know anything. She's ignorant. 
Hear Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth in the door of her house, on a seat, in the high places of the city, to call passengers who do right, who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Here we have an indication that seems to be that a simple woman is on the path of going into a life of fornication, as we mentioned before about the simple man, as well as the man. So both the, the, the male and the female, both the man and the woman, the girl and the boy, uh, th that is not what God would have any of his people do. Now, we know people are going to do that, and they do it anyway, but that should not be said of God's people. Again, God's people ought to teach their children properly and put strict rules upon their lives so that they won't ruin their lives and that they won't end up being fool, a fool instead of becoming wise. And so, the woman who is simple and knoweth nothing, according to Proverbs 9, verse 13, becomes the enticer of other simple men. It's just that God wants his people to live pure. God wants his people to live holy lives. So whether you're a male or a female, being ignorant, being unlearned, being naive, being gullible, all leads one to the path of sin and even leads someone into a life that is ruined and even uh, becoming more foolish than they, they are. That's why God's word tells us that we're to increase in knowledge. You say, what kind of knowledge? Obviously, the word of God, first and foremost. I want you to hear Proverbs 14, verse 15. The Bible says, the simple believeth every word. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. You know, the simple one can be talked into doing anything. So who is the simple one? He's the one who's ignorant. He's the one who's naive. He's the one who's gullible. Proverbs 14, verse 18, the Bible says, the simple inherit folly. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. This verse means that the simple are on the pathway to folly. It says the simple inherit, inherit folly. That is, they're going to graduate from being simple to becoming a fool. But the prudent man graduates to higher levels of knowledge and understanding. He's crowned with knowledge. That's his destination. That's the prudent man, the wise man. Here, Proverbs 19, verse 25. Proverbs 19, verse 25. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware, and reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. So the simple man doesn't have understanding. That's the simple man. Again, he's naive. Uh, he's ignorant. He's gullible. That's the simple man. Being simple is equated with one who lacks understanding. It's equated to one who's void of understanding. And it's not enough just to reprove the simple one. Now, Let's understand that. If you go to a wise man, 
one who has understanding, one who has knowledge, one who has discretion and discernment, if you go to a wise man and reprove him, you go to the wise man and you correct him, the Bible says he'll understand that and he'll take it and use it for his own benefit. That is, he gets it. He doesn't get offended. He doesn't try to justify his actions. He takes the reproof, and he'll even thank that person for correcting him. That's the wise person. But the simple one needs some kind of punishment to get his attention. The simple one needs some kind of negative repercussions, or he just doesn't get it. He's simple. Again, God does not want us to be simple. He wants his people to be wise. Proverbs 19, verse 25 says, Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware him, and reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. So the simple one doesn't have to necessarily be one who gets the beating. The simple one doesn't have to learn the hard way. The simple one should learn when the scorner gets negative repercussions happening to him. In other words, the simple should learn from the fool, seeing that the fool is doing all these things that are causing difficulty in his life the simple should learn from that and seek and go on to be a wise person. The simple can learn from other people, other people's mistakes. Instead of learning from their own experiences, which brought forth negative repercussions uh, for its actions. I mean, you can learn that way when you make a mistake and you have to pay for it, but I'd rather learn from someone who made the mistake so I don't have to make the mistake. And that's what God's talking about. And that's another good reason to not want to be a simple person. Why should God's people not want to be a simple person? Well, not to grow up a fool and ruin our lives. And certainly we don't want our children to grow up to be fools and ruin their lives. And then, not to be roped in by the strange woman, someone who is not our spouse, our wife or husband, but also not to have to learn the hard way. God does not want us to learn the hard way. Now, if we have to, we will, but we should not have to learn the hard way. I personally, again, would rather uh, like to learn my lessons verbally. I'd rather uh, learn my lesson by someone t telling me or talking to me or correcting me or giving me some advice from maybe some mistakes they made previously in their life. I would rather have someone tell me something and then I get it and I understand it. That, that's the person who's moving on to be a wise person. I would rather go to church and hear the preaching and say, you know, that makes sense. I'm going to follow God's word. I'm not going to follow what my friends and peers say and what the media wants me to believe. I, I'm going to follow God's word. See, that's the simple graduating to be wise. And God wants his children to be wise. But the simple one learns uh, uh, from the mistakes of others and graduates to becoming wise. That's what God would have. But the simple ones, uh, many times, uh, let the preaching and the instruction go in one ear and out the other. If you have children, I have children, if we give them instruction, if we give them uh, uh, some guidance that they need in their lives and they just turn away from it, uh, that's showing that not only are they simple, but they're on their way to become fools. And we don't want that for any of our children. It's only when someone, uh, 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 a simple person, 
uh, knows uh, and has to deal with what that person sowed, uh, reaping what they sowed, uh, dealing with negative repercussions uh, because of that, that person or that friend's stupidity that the simple one hopefully starts thinking about his own stupidity because of the stupidity of other people, maybe his friends. Proverbs 22, verse number 3, the Bible says, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. In other words, he sees what, what the negative repercussions are going to be, and he makes a wise decision. It says a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. He doesn't go down that path, but the simple pass on and are punished. The simple pass on and are punished. And so this morning, I'm just giving some reasons why uh, God does not want God's people to be simple or remain simple. Why? Not to grow up a fool and ruin one's life. Not to be roped in by the strange woman. Not to have to learn the hard way. But then also, not to sin because of ignorance. God does not want his people to sin because of ignorance. I want to read to you from Ezekiel chapter 45 verses 19 and 20 Ezekiel 45 19 and 20 the Bible says and the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the posts of the house and upon the four corners of the settle of the altar and upon the posts of the gate of the inner court and so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month, listen to these words, for every one that erreth, and for him that is simple. You hear those words? And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for every one that erreth, and for him that is simple, so shall ye reconcile the house. In other words, a lot of people make mistakes. A lot of people commit errors and get into sin all because of ignorance. And many commit sins of ignorance because they're simple. They're unlearned. They're naive. They're gullible. Now, what I'm talking about this morning, I hope as parents, uh, we're getting, getting this and seeing how important it is for us to rear our children properly, especially when they're young. Get them while they're young. By the way, how can we obey God's laws when we don't even know what God's laws are? How can we obey God when we don't know what God expects of us? How can we know what God expects of us if we don't read and study God's word? If we don't hear the preaching and the teaching of God's word? Remember, God ordained the local church and he has called pastors and teachers to help all of us, including the pastor and teacher, to learn God's word so we can be blessed as we obey God's word and as we teach our children so they could grow up and be blessed instead of being cursed. Now, I'm not talking primarily this morning to the unsaved. I'm talking about those of us who profess to be saved, those of us who name the name of Jesus Christ as our personal savior, as the only one we're depending on to be forgiven and go to heaven because of Calvary. So God doesn't want his children to be simple. And a sin committed because of ignorance is still sin. Hear Romans chapter 16, verse 18. Romans 16, verse 18. For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches 
Deceive the hearts of the simple. Deceive the hearts of the simple. Now, this, this verse is referring to false teachers. And who is being deceived by these false teachers? It says those who are simple. Simple people are deceived by false teachers. And many of these people being deceived don't know any better because of their ignorance, especially when it comes to God's Word. Here, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 14. The Bible says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So, if one is simple, he can be easily deceived. If we don't read and study God's Word, and if we don't go to church and get the teaching and the preaching that God has for us in that local church, we'll end up going down the path of the simple and maybe even go further down the path leading to a fool. So now, what are some things that can help us not to be simple? What are some practical things that can help us not to be simple? Things that will increase our learning so we don't fall into the category of being ignorant and naive and gullible. Well, number one, obviously, reading and studying God's Word. I hope we're getting to see how important it is for God's people to be into God's Word, in God's Word, every day, studying it systematically, reading it uh, systematically. Psalm 19, verses 7 and 8, we started out with this, these verses as our text verse. Here again, Psalm 19, 7 and 8. The law of the Lord, that's talking about God's word, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And so, how can we uh, help from being simple. What are some practical ways? Well, number one, obviously, we need to read and study God's Word every day. Number two, we need to listen to instruction. We need to listen to instruction. Over and over again, God's Word tells us that the simple one needs to gain instruction. Young people, you need to listen to your parents and also listen to the wisdom of spiritual people, godly people, and come and hear the preaching and the teaching of God's Word. And so read and study God's Word on a daily basis. Listen to instruction. And then, number three, things that will help us not to be simple. We need to exercise our brains. Now that's very practical. We need to exercise our brains. Thank God for technology. But the truth is, because of modern technology, our brains are no longer being challenged. People can't do math anymore because they now rely on a calculator. We had a little mom and pop store uh, two or three blocks from where I grew up. And everybody knew that store. I mean, there was no shop right. There was none of those, those stores, the mall, n none of that. And we called it Stern's. Sam Stern owned it with his wife and daughters. And he was up in age. And one of his daughters, her name was Babe, and Babe, she 
probably passed on years and years ago. But uh, uh, if you went in that store and you purchased whatever it was, she took a brown paper bag and she would write the price of the item you're buying, the several items, she'd list them all on the paper bag by price, she'd list the price, she'd add it up herself. She didn't have a calculator. She just added it up. Now, you could take what you purchased home, and if you doubt it, uh, her, her math, or arithmetic, or whatever they called it at that time, uh, you can check it. And she was always right. Uh, the babe was great with numbers, uh, and she didn't use a calculator. But today, how many people even have trouble adding adding simple numbers and carrying over maybe a number to another column, and they just don't know how to do it. They use the calculator. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, because guess what I use all the time? I use the calculator. Uh, so I'm preaching to myself, uh, but people can't even read a map anymore because they use the GPS. They don't. Th th some, some young, young people don't even know how to read a map. And how many people spend wasted hours looking at television and wasted hours on Facebook? People no longer play games to build one's intelligence, like Scrabble. Uh, young people don't even know probably <clears throat> what Scrabble is. Instead, they spend hours playing some video game. And then, how about listening to godly music? I'm talking about doing some practical things that can take us from being simple to being wise. How about listening to godly music and even learn to play a musical instrument? That will stretch your thinking and your mind and exercise your mind as opposed to just listening to rock music which tends toward simplicity in one's life leading even that person to be a fool i'm talking about things now that will help us not to be a simple person number five <clears throat> hands-on working or working physically with our hands people don't do that anymore how about building something how about working on your car or your bicycle, or your motorcycle, or your go-kart, and uh, ladies, you know, maybe uh, hemming a curtain, or uh, doing something uh, th that you have to use your mind and your hands uh, in coordination. Fix something. And then, number six, how we can help ourselves to graduate from being simple to being wise have conversations with intelligent people. Have conversations with intelligent people where we do most of the listening. Again, where we do most of the listening. Proverbs 13, verse number 20, the Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And so, some practical ways that will help us not to be a simple person. Read and study the Bible. Listen to godly instruction and preaching and apply it to your life. Exercise your brain. Listen to godly music and even learn to play a musical instrument. Work with your hands. Have conversations with intelligent people where you do most of the listening. And so in closing, I want you to hear Proverbs chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 and 13,
the Bible says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And then in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taught in all the learning of the Chaldeans, it's said of them in Daniel 1, verse number 17, and for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Then Daniel 1 verse 20 says, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that were in all his realm. And all of God's people should seek to increase their learning, their understanding, their wisdom, their discretion. And then the Apostle Paul gives testimony of himself in Acts chapter 26, verses 24 and 25. The Bible says, and ha as he thus spake for himself, that's the Apostle Paul, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. In other words, Festus is criticizing the Apostle Paul for learning too much. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, Paul said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and of soberness. And I say tonight, that ought, this morning, that ought to be the testimony of every one of God's people. What was Paul's testimony? He said to Festus, but I speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Others should even say of us, they're too smart for their own good. They know too much Bible. That would be a compliment. I'd rather get accused of knowing too much Bible than being accused of being ignorant to it. So the necessity of God's people to spend quality time reading and studying God's word and then applying it to their lives. Those of us who are saved, let's decide that we're not going to be simple ones. And if we are, we're not going to remain simple ones, but rather we're going to graduate to become wise. One who reads and studies God's word and also takes correction and benefits from it. That's the wise man. That's the prudent man, and that's God's will for his children. So first comes salvation. Make sure your trust is in Jesus Christ, the one you're depending on to be forgiven and go to heaven. It's not how good a person it is. It, it, it is. It's not uh, whether uh, one is religious or not. Religion uh, is taking many people to hell. Religion doesn't save. Jesus saves. What he's done on Calvary, he suffered, bled, and died, and rose three days later. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you called upon Jesus Christ? He said, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. And that's what God wants to do. And so, those who are not saved, don't remain a fool and die a fool. But move on and at least be simple, and then move on and be wise. Then, God's people, let's not settle for just being simple, but rather, let it be our goal in our lives to be wise and also teach our children to be wise. And let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Bless decisions that may be made this morning.
save the lost. May unsaved people understand the gospel and call upon you, dear Jesus, as their personal savior, that they may have eternal life. And then those of us who are saved, dear God, help us not to just remain simple if we are. Let us graduate to being wise. May that be our desire, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a songbook, turn to page 281. Would you stand with me? Maybe someone needs to come to the altar this morning and talk to God about maybe something he spoke to you about. 281. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Let's stand together. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Here 